Hello and welcome to our very first matchup in our first map campaign for the old world, Scumbog's Vision. Today, we are gonna have the Night Goblin forces led by the great and mighty Snogborg atop his giant cave squig and obviously the rest of his night goblin forces to go along with him as he was told to lead these into the lands of the empire. And on the other side of the board defending this pass, we have Rupertus, a new young general of the empire and his companion Carl, his trusty battle standard bearer. Now this first old world map campaign that we're fighting in Bretonia is sponsored by Wayland Games. We play and call it work. Let's take a look at Snogbarg's army for the first time in this campaign. Here we have the great and the mighty Snogbarg on this giant cave squig. Uh, Jumpa, I suppose. I haven't given him a name yet, and that's, uh, that's Jumpa. Uh, again, no magic items allowed initially. We gotta hunt them down and steal them, or and or steal them from the enemy. He is simply equipped with, what you see is what you get, light armor, shield, cav spear, giant cave squig. Let's take a look at Snogbarg's retinue. I didn't quite consider giving them any names. They are just basic Night Goblin characters. We'll see if they aspire to anything. In the middle, we have a level two go Night Goblin Shaman here. We already rolled up his spells for the campaign. It's gonna be the signature spell, Ear We Go. Sorry, that is literally not the signature spell. He knows Ear We Go and the signature spell from the Laura Mork, Itchy Nuisance on the right. Night Goblin Big Boss with a great weapon. And on the left, the Night Goblin Big Boss, who is Snog Barg's Battle Standard Bear, also equipped with a great weapon. The rest of the warband will include Night Goblins with spears and shields. There's 28 in this unit with full command. They're also equipped with three Goblin Fanatics, but Goblin Fanatics often run the risk of dying. And if they die, they die. That's the campaign. Well, there's rolls afterwards. There is an after game sequence, by the way. So stick around until the very end to see what happens to these armies afterwards. Another Night Goblin mob, but they're equipped with short bows. Also still full command. And three more fanatics. We got six fanatics in this list. Two Night Goblin squig herds with 20 squigs and four herders. I'll be running two river troll units. One's got four with great weapons and the other one only had enough points for three. Correction, I meant stone trolls. I do have river trolls though. See, told you, they also have great weapons. Two rampaging mangler squigs. One giant chooses to follow the great and mighty Snogbarg into combat, or maybe Snogbarg is just kind and feeds him well, or lets him do whatever he wants really. This is Hembo the giant. <laughs> All praise Himbo! All right, we have Rupertus, General of the Empire. He's mounted on a Spartan warhorse. He has a pistol tucked away somewhere. He has full plate armor and a great weapon. We also have our captain, Carl, carrying his battle standard, who has a great weapon, full plate armor, a shield, and he's on foot in the midst of all his infantry. And then we have a handgunner champion with a repeater handgun. He's an old and veteran huntsman who might survive. Most likely not. So he has a name too, he's Felix. I just like the model. <laughs> I just wanted to give him a name. We got Felix the handgunner. Starting off our core, we have 32 veteran state troops with halberds, light armor, a standard bearer, and a musician. We have two identical units of state troops with spears, shields, light armor, and full command. We have two units of handgunners, only one of them has the great and mighty Felix, though. They do, however, have musicians and banners, and they're 10 strong. We have two units of crossbowmen, both with a banner and a musician. We have two units of 20 greatswords with full command. Technically, jumping back to core temporarily, we have a minimum-sized squad of knights with full command. And in our one and only rare choice to add some amount of artillery to this list, we have a Hellstorm rocket battery. Before we get into it, a word from our sponsor, Wayland Games. Now, if you're looking to buy a new unit, upgrade your army, or just get into a new collection altogether, I bid you go check them out. Everything you could possibly need is down in the description down below for Wayland Games. Now, they are a massive supporter of mini war games, so consider supporting them as well. Thank you for that. Now, let's get to the game. Jacob and I are deployed and ready for this battle for the past game. For we are fighting in the past between the great lands of the Empire and Bretonia. Now, yep. quick quiz, because I don't know the answer. What's the name of this pass? Blood, is it Blood's no Pass? No idea. Damn it. I haven't played that much Total War. I play with plastic models. No, it's like, but it's on the <laughs> maps and all the books and everything too. It's a major no, trade don't route. Know it. I don't know it either. Okay, I was hoping I was hoping you did. Okay, that's the 
for any keen viewer who understands the geography Put it in the comments below. of the old world. And we, tell us we're dumb for not remembering. Thank you, yes. <laughs> That is the pass we're currently playing in. There is some imperial architecture in the form of watchtowers watching the pass. The pass is like kilometers wide. This is one of the highways that go through it. And like you've seen previously, we wanted to immediately get to a battle. That's kind of why we kind of forced this one to happen. Not force it to happen, but for this campaign to get any story going, going, we got to get the battles rolling out. We got to get the names important. We got to yep. see who survives. We got to see who doesn't. You can't start a campaign without a battle report to go with it. Correct. So we've got a battle <laughs> report happening today. And I couldn't ask for a better guess for it. <laughs> we've got the spirit of the well, game in mind. We well, hope. <laughs> yeah, true. So here we have the forces of the Empire, technically from Nordland, but I don't know. Where do you think they'd rally? I guess they could say they rallied from Nordland. You Went know, all the way down to Althorf. <laughs> yeah, they've been walking a long time to get here. Because some scribe somewhere said, oh, these guys need to go there. Now, now, realistically, for the campaign, these games are going to be pretty typical games of the old world. Skip ahead if you don't want like extra information, if you just want the gameplay. But... There is an after game sequence to keep track of all the armies as they march around. That's the point of the tokens. That's the point of having all the information available. Grabbing artifacts, taking artifacts, taking heads, gaining infamy, gaining renown, all that stuff. It's uh, units staying permanently dead. And then you can you can merge units together. Yep. Like like say your great swords are both knocked down to like eleven and fifteen. You just boom. You just can consolidate them together to one bigger well, squad. Steve stuff can. like that. Steve can't. I'll correct. try to get yeah. some killed so my so his collection matches what lives after now, this battle. Granted, <laughs> Steve owns most of this stuff, and we kind of kept. That's why we have the are those Nuln technically, but the black and yellows. Yeah, the black and yellows. The black and yellows. So we have the black and yellows because that's like the command structure of the force here. And Steve can emulate some of this. I do want guests to play in this campaign, which I believe I mentioned earlier, but. There will have to obviously we have a blue and yellow army. This army in the future will probably be black and yellow. So you have to like give and take here to make it a little flexible. But we're gonna try our best to keep it as consistent as possible. Being like the goal is ninety nine percent. Gonna remember like I lost one squig. He's out of the list. You're That's setting a, your standards too high. The goal is at least ninety percent. Ninety nine is too high. Ninety nine is kind of high. Okay, ninety percent. Ninety percent is the goal. Mangler dies, boom, Mangler's out of here. Himbo dies, Himbo's out of here. So like that, like I can't like I could recklessly throw my giant in a combat here, but if he goes down, there's a chance we never see Himbo again. And when armies replenish, sometimes your tier goes up, sometimes your tier goes down. You won't have access to as much rare allotment as you had when you initially built the list. So if I roll like a really high replenishment roll, maybe I get 400 points to add back to the army, but I'm missing like all my core, you must fill your core back up first. You have to always follow the legal force so organization. So I can lose a lot of core before I have Correct. to replenish it. <laughs> Correct, <laughs> that works exactly that way. Now we're gonna get to the game. This is a battle for the past mission. Yep. For anyone unfamiliar, these walls, these long edges of the board are impassable. So when units end up fleeing towards them, they kind of hit them, realize they can't get anywhere, and then turn to go towards the nearest uh, short table edge instead. Otherwise, it's just got a fancy deployment where we're kind of stuck uh, using the short battlefield edge and we're still two feet apart. Uh, I guess we'll roll out to see who goes first. I get a, you get a, or you beat me anyways, even with the plus one, the twin tailed comment, let's go. Uh, generally for my deployment, if you guys are curious, we got Himbo the giant squig, our general on giant cave squig, the great and mighty Schnogbar, who has no magical equipment to really keep him alive, but we're gonna try and make it work. Two units of trolls, river behind. We got night goblins, squig herd, squig herd, more stone trolls, goblin archers, and then a mangler squig. And then on your side, you have what looks to be some sort of, you have purpose to your deployment. I don't understand your your technique here or, or the tactics. Uh, my technique is I have a lot of core, and we're hoping it does something. So it's going to need to flank charge and get combat res. So it's just a lot of redundancies. You have your main, is that the veterans? That's the veteran state troops, yep. Right. So those are halberdiers, and they're surrounded by spearmen, spearmen, uh, hand gunners. Great swords to try and come in and catch something that gets stuck in the middle. Great swords. The here. knights will go wherever they go eventually, and it, it thematically fit. That's, you know, Rupert sitting there on his horse commanding everything. Yeah. Do you think it'd be like, are those nobles as well? The uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Knights of the Empire? That's him and his posse. Yeah, they went to school together. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> And yeah. all that. They grew up together, absolutely. Well, maybe, maybe they're not all nobles, but they're at least from his estate, right? Like, these, uh, are, these are his companions. There they're, we go. They're, they're chilling with him. That works. We got crossbows here on the hill, crossbows garrisoning the building, and one Hellstorm rocket battery in the back. So. Which is going to be most of my first turn is Hellstorm time. That's true. I guess we're going to go right to Empire turn one. 
while Jacob is figuring things out here, we don't really have wizards. We don't, I mean, I have a level two wizard. Uh, there are some armies that have more powerful wizards. General rule of the campaign is each faction can only have one level four wizard. We're trying to emulate how rare that phenomenon is, is having a wizard that powerful. Uh, so you're going to see a lot more like level twos, maybe a level three here and there. Probably not a lot of level ones, but uh, some of the neutral armies might have level ones. It all, it's all random. It's all out of control. And this could go sideways. It could not go sideways. Eh, we'll see. And again, most of the goals when large armies come uh, to agree to fight somewhere, you're trying to break the enemy force and get them out of the area. So there's no objectives. It's just your standard gameplay. It's all about the after game sequence for the most part. So movement wise, nothing, nothing. much, eh? Right, we're My entire there. turn is Hellstorm time. It's literally only Hellstorm. All right, so where do you, what do you want to target? I have to pick a unit within 48 inches and place three small blasts on the center of the unit. These goblins They're are at 48 inches. So the center of the unit will be right there. Now for anyone curious on Hellstorm rocket batteries, it immediately shoots out three rockets that all go towards the target, but they're all indirect fire. Even if you have line of sight, they fire like an indirect stone thrower. Yep. So they're gonna do a full scatter using the little arrow on the scatter die. One of the few, one of the two references to that in the entire rule book. And uh, we're gonna see where they go. But if you do roll a direct hit, you still get to reduce the scatter with the cruise ballistic skill, which I assume is BS3. Uh, I'll check if it yeah. comes up. But this one's a two in this This case. one's a two and it's gonna come over there. Boom. Looks like four for sure hits there and like two, four, six, seven, eight partials. I'm gonna do the partial rules here and we'll make a pool of hits. Uh, that's not bad. That's not bad. The first one's gonna be eight hits. I believe they all shoot at the same time and you just kind of accumulate the hits and then resolve yeah. the damage. And the next scatter, Oop. it's gonna be... They're all firing out of the rocket battery at the same time. Oh, that's a big scatter. That is landing on a river troll and the mighty general of the army. Snogbard! All right, so on a four up, Snogbard is hit. Nope, no. he dodges out of the way. Thank you, Jumpa. And then the River Troll uh, is hit. Okay. Well, we just probably, oh, actually, yeah, just keep that there. We'll resolve them all once. more fun that way. And then right, one last, more uh, rocket. Where is it going? Eight. Oh, that's probably going to miss. That's probably going to land around here. Pooh. Awesome. <laughs> I love the Hellstorm rocket battery so much, dude. All right, so we got eight hits on the goblins and a hit on the We're River Troll. We're going to do the River Troll first. It's strength three. I'm assuming you're not toughness three. I believe I'm T4. That That's is nothing. a two. And then we have eight of them on the goblins. These are fours. Is there, there AP two on this, right? Uh, let me double check. It's AP one, they only have shields. That's four goblins dying to the explosion. We're gonna do all of the casualties at the end of the game. All right, that will conclude the Empire turn. Just a warning shot right away. We can go to Orc and Goblin. I mean, it wasn't two. a warning for four goblins. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I guess there was malicious intent with that salvo. <laughs> Now, this list was built with intent here. I, I kind of like the idea of having the one Night Goblin meme list going around in the campaign. I'm sure some of you appreciate it as well. I have a lot of stupidity checks to do. Bam, bam, and bam. Three units. And I don't really have a high leadership. My general is the mighty Sno Snogbarg. Now, Snogbarg is uh, known for his might, but not his uh, will to lead goblins. He's leadership six. So we're going to do the stone trolls out front. They are going to fail their leadership check. They're subject to stupidity. And then we're going to do the river trolls behind it. They don't really know why they're here either. They're just showing up. And then the last unit of stone trolls. Uh, that's going to probably be a fail. Yeah, it's definitely a fail. What am I talking about? They're stone trolls. <laughs> I got these like markers for stupidity now. Uh, they're not available in the Mini Wargaming store yet, but if you keep your eyes on the Mini Wargaming Forge, uh, more and more tokens are becoming uh, available for like a bunch of different game systems. A AOS is our focus right now. Let's go put on both of them. I only have two tokens with me. I didn't f expect to fail. It's okay. All the trolls are stupid. We we'll don't really need the tokens. Yeah, I guess I, I want to remember they're all stupid this turn. They're all going to do their full move forward anyways. Uh, otherwise, nothing to do in the command phase. Uh, ooh, this guy's got spells. He's got Here We Go, the only relevant one, but it's not going to help me right now. And it, it gives me like a little baby stride of extra three inches of charge declaration and D3 more movement. But, uh... That's, I can't charge, so. We're gonna go right to the movement phase. Everything is full sending forward. This is the, this is the, uh, get him! You know, he's like, they're just stupid humans. Look how strong we are. They don't have a chance. They gotta get through the pass. They got, they, actually, yeah, they were, they were commanded by the war boss of the WOG and the forces here to take some land in the empire and distract them. 
away from us um, helping out Britonia. Yeah, I got my uh, stupidity guys, I, I believe, moving the compulsory move before the remaining moves, and so do my um, three random movers. The giant cave squigs at random mover as well. Okay, well, this is where everything ends up once it was done marching and doing its compulsory moves. These, these stone trolls might be kind of screwed because they had to go before the... I had no choice for it. Wow. I could have deployed them on the line, but I ended up putting my squig herds down first, leaving them with no real option other than a bad leadership check. But they'll eventually get there. There's six turns. Uh, marched, march, marched. Uh, I got the dice beside them for their random movement. This guy ended up going uh, 12 inches, which isn't bad. Going up and around the woods there. These guys went through the woods and uh, didn't quite clear them. And then the giant just marched forward. Now, the mighty Snogbar. Snog, Snogbrog? Snogbar! Like, no protection. So he, he could get quarreled to death or, or bolted to death. Handguns. Quarrels oh. aren't quite in range yet. Yeah, true, true, true. Do you know the difference between a bolt and a quarrel? I think it's just like one's French and one's English. Probably. They're like a wording. Yeah. I'd have to double check. I guess I don't know either. I, I I'm think... sure there's a definition somewhere. Yeah, it's true. All right, that's uh, that's it for my turn. Realistically, my wizard doesn't have any missiles. And uh, we're just going to try and clash into the Imperial lines. And we're going to see if they can hold the line. All right. Turn two for the Empire. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Dunstein. Not really any command phase things to do for the Empire as they try and wait. Do you think they got the jitters? Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> I would. So with that, we go to the movement phase. There's no charges. The great swords are going to move forward a wee bit. No marching, just moving. Same with the other great swords. Boop, boop, boop. They're going to answer the uh, manglers coming up. Yep. Yeah. I want to have charge arc if it shows up. I understand. The holding still with the state troops. I think so. All right. And then we're right to... Well, you can do that first if you want, but you probably actually have handgunners who could do it. Yeah, I do have handgunners in range of a few things. All righty. And squad. All right, Felix! Felix's squad is going to open up into these squig herds here because they won't have any cover. Just be range. Uh, penalties. That's about it. Minus one to hit. But the guy, Felix himself, has a repeater handgun, so he actually gets three shots at a higher BS, which means he hits the same as everyone else, right? Yep. But he just gets... Because the multiple shot means that it equals out to being the same as everybody else. Oh, he's BS4 higher. and the yeah. BS3, gotcha. Okay. Yep. So they should all be hitting on fives then. Yep. All right. Long range. Long range. Five and hit. multiple shot. Bang, 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 bang. One, two hits. Not bad. And I think these, these kill on fours. I'm T3. That's a dead squig. Burp. I'd like to think he got it. Oh, you know what? You want different dice? I can give you green dice for Felix in the future. We can do that. Next time he shoots, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will also like to imagine that Felix uh, did that there. We're going to track it as his kill. <laughs> Absolutely. Also, sometimes when we play with these uh, movement trays here, you don't see them as much, but the converter trays, these are also tools you can get on the mini board gaming forge. So if you have like Sigmar models, but you want to play the old world, well, we have the trays for you. And then if you don't want to rebase your army because you like your basing technique you had before and you don't want to emulate it again or recreate it, well, then we also offer the extenders, which you can just paint to match your own bases if you so choose. We also sell the bases for your AOS models that slot into movement trays that are also the same texture as the bases. Anyways, check out the forge. Lots of stuff there. Right. Now, the le much less cool squad, because it doesn't have Felix in it, uh, shooting at the same target. No, or they he's got to shoot your uh, mighty warlord there. They see oh, a high value target coming out of those woods. Fine. Well, then it's going to be, I assume, range and like cover. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you're hitting on sixes. But kills in this game matter because we're tracking it they for do. the campaign. So if the Empire can take out the goblin war boss, that's, That's a big deal. So, like, as an example, for anyone curious, if he dies, say I win and he dies, or I lose and he dies, the next general is just one of the random heroes. I don't just get another goblin war boss. Like, no. this is, it's hard to, it's hard to get them, yeah. So, six as it is. Oh, yeah, they all missed. They just these. zip right into the woods, off the trees. He's fine. Look at him. Such a tactical genius. <laughs> Moving on to the hill with the crossbows. We're going to boof into Himbo, the giant. Two of the crossbows are out of range, though. So, it's going to be eight shots hitting on fives because of range yep yep that should be about it no champion in there loose oh that's a good shot though four five hits half hit <gasps> the elite of the empire six is to wound but uh, they stick if you get them oh he's got one sticking in him okay 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 you know what there's two shots too many there jacob wants to go back to do it we'll say you had four hits okay no wounds on the giant boo sorry guys all right we're on to the hellstorm rocket battery you want to go for the same command squad absolutely we're going for the same <laughs> big night demo squad it all looks right. tasty same idea we're going to scatter this three times and accumulate all the hits uh that's, that's a, a misfire. misfire so the misfire it re misfire it? resolves at the end of all the shooting. Because it, so yeah. scatter all of them first. Perfect, does. So we got one misfire. The second one is, uh, that's, ooh, that 
could do something. That's gonna land just past the troll. So we got nothing on the second one. And the third one, oh, it's gonna be around here. Boom. Boom. All right, so not quite connecting that time. What kind of misfires is this? Stone thing thrower, do? Uh, black powder chart. Oh, it just rolls. Oh, does it? If, what if you misfire three times? You just roll three times on yeah. the chart? <laughs> sure. Four. I don't know what that is. Oh, the war machine got knocked over and one of the crew was injured as, well, because of it. So, can it fire again next turn? No, it can't. We're going to turn it around. All right, so I'll have to wait until the turn afterwards to fire. I think I can say I'm disappointed at this. And a lot of people watching are probably disappointed because I love the Hellstorm rocket battery. It's just so likely to misfire. And then the garrison of crossbows are in range of the mangler squig over here. It'll be range. Uh, I don't think the woods are in the way, so it should just be fives. Well, we'll see. Can they hit as well as their friends? Uh, no. Four. That's not bad. And wounding on, I think fives here. Oh, let me check. Uh, he's he's tough as five. They're strength four. Those wound on fives. Was it two sixes and a five? Two sixes and a Ooh. five. Also, armor bane two on crossbow bolts. So two of he's only got a heavy armor. Two of those are going through for sure. And I get a five up save to prevent the third one. Oh, only four wounds on this guy. So he's got one wound left. That's it for empire turn. That's not bad at all. We got uh, a couple wounds on the mangler. A uh, little bit of damage. Actually, pretty much just the wounds on the mangler. But that's going to go to orcs and goblins turn two. I got a lot of stupidity checks to do. We're going to start with these stone trolls back here. Oh, seven. They fail. That's okay. Stone trolls out front. Oh, they pass. We can. That's scary. We can march with them. And the river trolls behind them. Seven. Oh, they're stupid as well. The funny part is they're kind of, they lose their movement because they have to move before they do. Uh, as we go to the movement phase, because I'm not going to cast Here We Go yet. I'll probably cast Here We Go next turn to get some charges going. Uh, we're going to move everything. Uh, but we do have to move the Manglers and the Stupid Units first. So if you could send them forward six for me. Yep. And then these guys don't move because they're just going to hit the uh, trolls here. And then uh, I'm going to roll up these guys. Why not? So the Mangler Squig here is gonna go uh, like the, the woods. I always like to play the woods, reduce the random movement by one because it's kind of their characteristic. It's gonna be 10 inches. You can go there and lumber a little bit. These guys could get a charge on him if they roll high enough later. Uh, Scarbrog is gonna go ooh, pretty far. He'll go 11 inches. Not gonna go the full distance with him. We're gonna go right out to the, oh. We're, we just wanna be right ahead of the trolls. That's what it was. Oh, we're gonna move more over this way. He's gonna completely block the trolls and I don't want that. And then the other mangler, <laughs> barely hanging on with a single wound. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go eight inches. I'm just keep up, keep them going in, apply the pressure. Things aren't gonna get shot anywhere else, I suppose. Boo. And then everything else here is gonna march, marching, marching, marching. They're unfortunately stuck. They're gonna have to sidestep. And everything got out. Now the cave squigs over there got a little slowed down by the woods, but they had their full march still. Uh, they had to wheel past the squigs a little bit. And obviously we're, we had to sidestep here so we could filter through this gap later with the Night Goblin Horde there. But that's that's okay. That's more of a, like a last wave anyways. Albeit, it sucks they're being slowed down. I want this stuff to kind of go in and cause havoc before I really release their fanatics. And that's this is going to be more of a cleanup crew. Or, I mean, it's the Night Goblin cleanup crew, I guess. We marched our Night Goblin Horde into the woods. And that's it. I think, uh, oh, and the Giants over here. Just kind of keeping up with these uh, these pieces on this side. I think we're done our turn. <laughs> it's another turn of moving for the goblins. And when it comes to uh, battle for the past, that's the name of the scenario. Yep. Uh, it's a lot of, there's not as much posturing as like, I'm open, uh, like a wider battlefield. Yep. So we're gonna go to turn three for the empire? Yeah. All right. Like I mentioned earlier, command phase is a, uh, the only relevant stuff will be like rally and cry. And do you have like the, the hold your ground rule and stuff like that still? Uh. Only on the general and the captain who aren't, or the captain isn't in units and the generals and the knights. That's what it was. It like makes them pass panic checks or Auto something pass like panic. that. Yeah, yep. that's what it was. Gotcha. Okay, well, uh, we're gonna go right to charge declaration. We've already figured out these great swords. Who, which which one of these two do they mangler want to charge? Mangler squig. We'll move for the mangler, right? Okay, fair. Uh, and then that great sword unit is charge, charging that mangler squig over there. So we're gonna resolve this one first. I think they just need a five on one of the I think both two units dice. need a five on one of the two dice. Yeah. Hey, perfect. They're going to wheel like a quarter of an inch to maximize those two lines as they align there. And what do we have on this side? Also needs five. Ooh, Ooh. They fail forward three. Their dinner. Well, I only got a wound. Crossbows left, might help. Yeah, you're probably fine. <laughs> Great swords. What do they know? All right, rest of your moves. We'll come back once you figure it out. It's kind of a stationary, but they might move a bit. Actually, a lot more movement than I thought. We just full marched the halberdiers towards the squig herd. I need to make you charge me. 
And then the spearmen formed up behind the handgunners. So when the handgunners flee, inevitably, they're going to just pop through the... And hopefully the spearmen understand that that's part of the plan. And yeah, that, that's the goal. And don't panic as well. Um, yeah, and then the knights just... Uh, sort of the battle standard bear and uh, Rupertus the general... Oh, sorry. Is it Frank? Carl. Carl the battle standard bear and General Rupertus just taking a central formation so that they can all um, benefit from leadership and stuff. Shooting phase, we know that that thing's not going to fire this turn, so we can flip that over in a minute. And then we have a bunch of boss crows and handguns. Yep. We are going to see if this squad of crosswomen can finish off the giant cave, not giants, cave, the mangler squigs. Only one wood left. We are looking at fives to hit because of range. Oh no, We're, who are these guys? <laughs> Trained marksmen, apparently. Oh, fives to wound. Six is kill. Ooh, a single wound that I get a heavy armor That's save That's dramatic. Against. Ooh, a lot, a lot, a lot. Oh, the manglers go down. We'll see what happens to them at the end of the game. If you'd be so kind. Thank you. Oh. Moving on to this squad of handgunners without Felix. Just pointing just right into them. Yep. No cover there at all. These are... Pro I'll, I'll just double check the range. They are within a foot, so forced to hit. This is best odds. Not bad. Only a couple miss. Go wide. And that's three dead. Da -ba -ba bang Awesome. Good shot. One, two, three. Not enough for a panic, though. And then we have the other handgunners with Felix. Uh, this will be light cover because of the woods. Yep. All right, so these... Oh, let me check range, sorry. They're all within a foot as well. So these are fives to hit. All right. Because of uh, cover. Oh, oh Felix, no. no! Felix, you suck! <laughs> it wasn't him all along. Oh, it's two more dead. No, my squigs. Boo, boo. Nice. I like that the campaign's already having effects. It's like, oh, yeah, we can put down the giant with them. But then he's like, I kind of want to conserve my own forces and protect my infantry line by uh, hammering mine a little bit. So they're actually just going to volley over the battlefield. This should just be range penalties, and that's yep. it. Ten shots on fives. These guys are great. I love these guys. Uh, fours? Probably. Maybe threes. Let me check my toughness. That is three more dead, and I believe that is actually a panic. I lost six so far. More importantly, it made Luca reposition all of his squig herders. I, every time I lose, I gotta move my squig herder, like stupid squig goblin herder guys around. So six out of 24 is a quarter. However, I had less than 24 there. So yeah, that's definitely a panic. And they do get warband, and I have two, plus two bonus to this. Uh, that's uh, for sure good. They're loving it. Except for shooting, we're going to go right on to the combat here with the Mangler Squig and the Great Swords. You get plus three to your initiative. You'll be striking at initiative four. I'm initiative three, but I'll just double check if I have any weird rules that matter. Ooh, I do owe the viewers and Jacob a couple of checks. He has a rule called Curse Splat I wasn't aware of. All difficult terrain is dangerous terrain to the Mangler. He had two moves through the woods. He's good. Ones he would have taken wounds. Just wanted to make sure I did that correctly. Great sword swings. You should have six because of the champion. The champion of the unit. All right. Uh, the champion has weapon skill five. Surprisingly, I didn't realize this. So uh, you know. he's got different dice. I'm weapon skill four. Hey, look, champion hit. Yeah. Otherwise, the other guys hit on fours. Uh, your strength five. I have to guess. Yeah. So that's force to wound. That's going to cut right through my armor because it's uh, AP three. The champion carved him up a little bit there. Good job, buddy. I will figure out what the heck I do. Angler Squigs have D6 attacks between the two of them. It's gonna be one. All right, nice. They're too distracted by something. I hit on not that. Right to my stomp attacks. There's D3 of them. Oh, it's not bad. That'll help. He's strength six. He is the behemoth. So these are gonna okay. have AP2. Uh, three wounds at minus two. Are you full plate armor? I am. All right, sixes. Two die. Back. Two are gonna go down. I believe. That is it. Go right to combat resolution. You, you definitely won this, so we'll start with you. You did a wound to me. You have two remaining ranks available to you. You're a close order, and you have a banner in the unit. I think that's it for you. Yep. I did two damage. We are a behemoth. We do get close order. Well, sorry, we count as close order, but we only have four wounds. Our unit strength is four. Not high enough to claim uh, close order. I'm gonna lose this combat by three, and your unit double outnumbers me. So we're going to use our general's leadership of six is what we're trying to roll on here. Oh my gosh. I only lost by three. <laughs> we give ground. All right. Uh, would you like to uh, restrain and reform or pursue? If you pursue, you're probably going to end up hitting... I think the giant's actually closer. You'll hit the giant, which I could, you know, not commit to it, but I'm probably going to commit to it. Yeah. Uh... I will do this all the same. One two inches backwards, I'll double check that's accurate. We're gonna try to restrain and reform those great swords. They, nine? I think they fail. Ah, uh, yeah, that guy looks like he's pretty yeah, far Yeah, he's away. eight, leadership eight. 
Okay. Uh, they, they don't have the veteran rule as a special rule nope. built in. All right. So they are, they're going to follow up, which means they're going to hit the giant like this. Boop. Giant gets hit first. Very close to hitting him. Uh, and that means I can either give ground and then you would keep going and hit him. I'm just going to, the giant's going to commit to the combat and align to you effectively. Because it's like the same difference. Doesn't really give him any impact hits, but he'll get like some initiative bonus, I suppose. Okay. And that's uh, that's turn three done? Yeah. Yeah, top of three's finished. We're on the bottom of turn three. Turn the Hellstorm around. Ah, uh, Hellstorm's good to fire again. Yeah, and he will have targets. All right, don't we have a lot of stupidity checks to make? It would be wonderful if they pass. Yeah, baba. Da! <laughs> Ooh. These great swords have no idea how lucky they are. River trolls. They're stupid. And stone trolls. They're stupid. All right. Everything's stupid. All right. A charge declaration. Uh, we're going to do... Uh, oh, yes. There's something. Oh, thank you. Spell to get you charges. We're actually here. getting some spells going here. We're going to cast... Oh, we got a couple spells to cast here. Cast Itchy Nuisance on our Halberdier unit there. Boop. Oh no! First spell cast of the campaign's a miscast? All right, well, let's see what we get. Uh, sure. <laughs> That's a power drain. The wizard incidentally consumes all of the immediate winds of magic surrounding it, and makes this spell undeniable. Like it, you, you can't, you can't, you can't dispel it. Uh, but the wizard, there's no more winds of magic available anymore, so the wizard can't cast any more spells for this turn. Which is fine, I guess I don't get here we go, but Itchy Nuisance helps. It reduces your initiative and toughness characteristics by one. That, I mean, it will help, I suppose. That, I would have one more spell to cast, but Power Drain says no more. So we're gonna go ahead and charge. Mangler's gonna charge here. They're already engaged in combat, so they hold. We're both gonna charge your, these guys are probably gonna fail because of the woods, but we're gonna try. I'm holding. Anyways. Yeah, holding all the same. Yeah, that's actually my only charge, just those three here. So this guy can't fail. Uh, I mean, I, yo, he gave ground. Even if he rolls a minimum three on his charge. So he'll go right there. He doesn't get no impact. He'll get like plus two initiative. That's about it. So he'll go first. And then these guys here, let's figure it out. They're gonna charge going the four. And these guys are gonna charge going the three because of the terrain. So they do fail. They needed a seven. They're off by one inch. So they're moving three because of the woods, taking the low die, and they're gonna fail forward three. These guys, however, do make it in. They would have moved in first, maximizing like that on the minimum distance, and then they just fail forward. I did forget to mention my cave squig is gonna charge. He'll just go in. He'll get nothing really going for him, but it's something. Uh, and then now the shaman's job is done. I don't really know what he's gonna do for the rest of this game. Maybe he'll just, I, he definitely wants to get away from these two squig bombs. So he's gonna, I don't know. He's gonna back up later. I do have to do my stupidity moves. Let's uh, just have these guys go, ooh. Then just the two troll units move forward as well. Okay, let's, for my the rest of these moves, Move those guys three inches. They're just gonna skirt the edge of the woods there and do a normal move and shoot their bows. You can you can see the curves of their smiles as they come snickering out of the woods. They got a they got a surprise for the Empire on their fourth turn. Uh, then we're gonna have these guys march forward. That's where they end up marching. River trolls. Not really stopping them. That was their full move. They had to wheel a little bit to get past the stone trolls. I don't really know what to do with that shaman uh, anymore. I kind of he's just gonna slink back. <laughs> back into the, the goblin unit, I guess. Let's just, that guy's supposed to be over here anyways. Let's put the shaman on the end. And then we'll put this guy where I wanted him, right there. That's gonna be it. Let's go to shooting. I actually have short pose. Uh, we're gonna shoot your great swords. We got five, short, we move so we only get five short pose shots. Uh, we have quick shots, so we don't care about the moving, but we do care about the fact that, are we within nine? It looks like we're within nine. Yeah, you're, you're Ah, nine. we're hitting you on fours then. Fours to hit. Whoosh. Short pose. This is a four to wound a great sword. Ooh, does it get through his full plate armor? No, no, it doesn't. Then we can go to fighting. Let's do, I, let's do this one first. I definitely have the initiative here. Squigs are nasty. Their weapon skill four with two attacks at strength five. There are fang filled gobs are minus one with armor beam. So I guess you only have light armor though, if I yep. recall. So we're just gonna go right through. However, those are veteran state troops. Let's go. Weapon skill four. We've so, been around the block and fought some goblins. We only hit you on fours because you are aware. Oh, see you, your veteran C. Well, stopped a hit, I guess, but it's still about half hit. Actually, exactly half hit, but it does kill on twos. 
So it kills four of your veterans. They will get to fight back though, which isn't bad. And you have six in the front, so that's your champion and- I don't have a champion in that squad. Oh, so those two guys are attacking yep. back then. Should be fours. Nope. nope, not quite. Okay, well, we don't get a lot of combat bonuses of squigs. A lot of the combat is like front loaded from the, the attacks. So I killed four guys. We are in an open order formation, so we get two rank bonuses. Just double checking, they get two rank bonuses for being in a combat order because they're open order, but they don't get the close order bonus because they're not close order. That's it, I got six. You didn't kill anyone back. Our, our Empire State Troops horde. No, I don't believe so. Okay, so you're Two gonna, ranks and a banner. Two ranks and a banner and close order. Yeah. Boom, so you have four, you're gonna be by two. Uh, or lose by two here. Uh, Six. You have your general nearby. Well. Yeah, that's not gonna help. That's uh, not gonna help, but I do have BSB. And that, his name is Frank. Carl. Carl. Yes! You give ground, actually. That's yeah. not so bad. I, I'm just gonna follow up. So you'll give ground a couple of inches. I will follow up without thinking about it, and... Uh, that's it. I think that might only be for the turn. Oh, it's next, next turn. turn. Nice. Ah, excellent. That is it for that combat. We got this one to go over here. With initiative, Mr. Big Mangler Squig here uh, adds is initiative six, which is kind of cool. It doesn't get impact hits, though. It only went two inches. D6 attacks from... The <laughs> nice. Ah, it's the same roll. I believe the next initiative is probably the Night Goblin uh, War Boss there. Nogbarg will go before Jumpa the Cave Squig. He's got four attacks with a Cav Spear. Your whips go four. Yes, I know those all. I'm He's... five on the champion, technically. That's true. Oh, Snogbarg should have issued a challenge to the mighty Greatsword Champion. It's a little too late. Uh, strength five with the Cav Spear. So I wound two, two times. No, three times. You should be. Are you T three on Greatsword? I believe so. Yeah. yeah. Three wounds at minus one because of the charge. Five up. Oh, the full plate armor coming in. One. Greatsword dies. And then the Cave Squig is next, or Jumpa is next. Jumpa's got three attacks. Oh, Jumpa's pissed. Two's to wound. <laughs> Jumpa! He's got killing blow. <laughs> he, just, he just literally bites the head off two Greatswords. Uh, you do get one save at minus one. Five up. Oh, nice. Okay, but Jumpa lands two killing blows on the Empire Greatswords. Huh. Way to go, Jumpa. I think... Well, I know the giant's next, because you're initiative one. We're not going to worry about putting any great swords in uh, Himbo's pants. I always like to roll on the chart and see what he does. Five. Right. Uh, Himbo is going to thump with club. So I'm gonna, I get to choose a model in the fighting rank. I'm going to choose the great sword champion to be the target of this one attack. This is a strength 10, minus 40 or save, D6 damage attack on the champion of the great swords. Do I hit? He steps out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Very well done, champion. <laughs> You're able to go. You still have your champion who's just dodging hell and uh, one random greatsword who can attack. Uh, the champion, and it'd be the banner bearer, so they can they can actually attack in the mangler or uh, Scarbrog if you want to. The champion and the remaining greatsword are going to go for the mangler. Three's on the green. Champions. Oh, nice roll. That's all hit. Four is to wound. Oh, jeez. Uh, that's it. He's, he's literally dead. <laughs> he's uh, just... you get AP2 on that one? AP2 on Greatswords. Oh, yeah. He's only got heavy armor. You just cut both of them down in one go. Well, okay, I, that calls for a timber. Double checking timber. Uh, I kind of like, I always remember you gotta maximize. So the, when he maximized on his four there, the Scarbrog would have had to maximize on three models, which means he's in base-to-base -base contact with the Mangler, because he has to be. So, we do a timber roll-off now. Uh, I got a five. Ah, oh, I could... Sorry, I didn't see your day. It was a four. It's a four. Yeah, it's it's a four. A four. Yeah, yeah. I get to control the timber. We're going to fall forward onto the great swords. No! But if Jacob won the roll, he could have had him fall on the mighty Scarbrog. So he falls. Both of them fall completely on the great swords, and they're going to get hit four times by it. At strength six, two's to wound, and it is minus one to your full plate armor save. This is more damage than he's done yes. so far. I killed two, two more. All right, so you destroy the mangler for three wounds, and you lose two more great swords in the effort. I get to do stomps, which is after great sword attacks. Let's go, himbo. D6 stomps. Whee. Five. Oh, I love this guy. Well, he misses thump with club, I guess, but I, I still respect the attempt. Twos to wound. These are at minus two because he's a behemoth. You have six up saves on your full plate. If that thump with club had hit, the mangler squig would still be <laughs> That's alive. That's true, actually. If that th if he didn't step out of the way of the thump with club, that mangler squig would be alive still. Ah, dang. All right, a few more go down. Well, let's check out combat res. I got seven wounds on you. 
Seven wounds in the pool. I have a close order with the giant. He's got enough unit strength for that. My uh, Scarbrog doesn't actually contribute to that. And I think that's all I have. You got three. Five total. Three wounds, banner, oh. rank. So that means I win this one by three. You I don't, am stubborn. Yeah, I was gonna say you don't have to use it, but I'd recommend doing it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be stubborn. And you're gonna be running this angle from the giant because he's got the higher unit strength. So before you roll to see how far you go, uh, unless you don't want to use stubborn and try and give a give ground instead, I'll let you think about it. We're definitely gonna use the stubborn. We're gonna go that way. I just have to determine. Uh, I'm gonna chase with both. Yeah, I'll just chase. I'll just chase with both. So it's all good. Go ahead and roll up your. You go three inches. There's no empire units nearby to cause panics too. That's them falling back in good order, back that direction, and rallying and reforming, going wide with great swords, which makes sense. That's that's how you typically want to utilize stubborn. And I said I'm gonna follow with both. So the giant cave squig. On Scarbrog, he'll go seven inches, which is enough to get in. And the giant, eh, this roll could be bad. Ah, 10 is good. Okay, good. So the giant is probably going to go straight in. Um, looks like he's probably going to maximize here. And then this guy's shortest path is going to unfortunately maximize him right beside the giant. <laughs> so a timber is potential again. That is the end of the third battle round. We're going to go on to battle round four. We're going to start off at the top of it with the Empire side. And I think we got some tricks up our sleeve over there. No! Fanatics! <laughs> Who could have seen this coming? We're gonna release the Fanatics within three inches there before... Well, that's start a turn subphase. Now, your command phase, nothing's really running, so don't have to worry about it. Uh, any charges to declare? Nope. No charges to declare, all right. They're scooting back, or Carl's scooting back, and they're getting up here so that if they give ground or fall back, they're gonna pop through. Right. And then you're as far back as possible to make it harder for you to follow up into them. I understand. I do have to move those fanatics over there first. Yep. During the compulsory. I'm gonna try and chew up your great swords and some of this stuff over here. We're just gonna go whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Kind of all straightforward. If I roll doubles, they die, and if things die, that's a permanent effect on the campaign. Uh they're boop, that's one dead. <laughs> he got tripped up in his own chain, the second fanatic. Oh, it doesn't go that far. It goes to about there, and then the last one's gonna go this way. And seven, okay, we got one hit. And if one fanatic that hits gets right through. D6 hits from that fanatic, five of them, uh oh. That's a dead greatsword on twos. Three greatswords go down. Then you may proceed with your movement. Yeah, it was effectively just the cab and the gen uh, the battle standard bearer moving backwards, okay. Uh, we go right to shooting. Hellstorm is good to shoot. Are we going back here for the command squad? We are, ooh. Or the squig herd, up to you. <laughs> let me think, let me think. I want, I want to kill them, be, or at least make you think twice about getting close enough to release fanatics. That's true. On the other hand, they're a more immediate threat. It's true. Let me think. We're going for the squig. Recognizing the true threat. That's nasty too, because they're six wide, so that's, well, I guess you never get direct hit. Oh, you could if you roll a two on a direct hit. That's technically, oh, a two inch scatter's pretty good there. Yep. It's gonna scatter over this way which is an interesting like four for sure hits because of the cardinal directions and then one, two, three. like three partials maybe? The four for sure's and three partials. All right, so we got six hits so far on the first one. The second rocket battery is gonna go eight it. Well, what's their BS3 probably? I believe so. Yep, so it's gonna scatter five. And the scatter to right over there, boom. Get like one partial on the... Now one partial on the Night Goblin Archers it is on a four up. Oh, they step out of the way of the explosion. And then one more from the heart of the squig herd. Oh God, <laughs> there's that misfire again. And what's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Uh oh, that's he not good. He blew up. The whole war machine just went sky high. Well, we'll see if it's still functional after the battle, I suppose. Oh, let's see it kills squigs on fours. Boom. That kills four of them, that's pretty good. Boom, boom, how many do we got here? 6, 12, 18, 22, That's not, that won't be a panic. Okay, just curious. Actually, I'm gonna say one of those kills the goblin, because I would have had to keep track of the goblin hit by the template, and he was one of the crosshair hits. I'm just gonna assume he died, if that works. Sure. Yeah, we'll put him back. Uh, and then you're gonna shoot them with the handgunners? Yeah, and crossbows. Oh, and crossbows. Well, the handgunners are gonna have no cover here, so yep. it's, uh, I, and half range, you're just a bunch of fours. Felix! Is, yeah, this is Felix's squad. Oh, oh he he's got, got some hits this time. A couple hits there with Felix. And these are threes to kill. Ah, Felix now, got two. Now we're talking. Oh, Felix got two of those kills. Three dead. That's a panicking. I'd have to do that immediately. I think that's a panicking, right? Five, six, uh, seven. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Panic! 
Uh, I gotta double check. Twig Herder, apparently leadership six, and we have a rank still, so we're good with Warband. No panics. But we have the crossbows firing. So it should be only range penalties, because they're in the garrison. They can see over the battlefield. Ten shots? Loose! Fives. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, just fives. Not bad. Still good, good amount of hits. Threes to kill. Th four more dead! Oh my god, <laughs> no! <laughs> my squigs! It's okay. It's fine. They it's don't have fine. any armor? No, they don't have no, no armor on them. Okay. Night, night goblins don't have armor either. Well, they can buy shields. And then we have the crossbows on the hill, putting 10 shots into them as well. I'm envisioning this like, you know, like a siege battle in um, Total War. It's right? worked. Oh, you just see all the, all all the, the trails. All the just yeah. flying overhead of the battle. Fives to hit, and you kill two more. All right, we are getting low. I don't think they're gonna do their squigs gone wild anymore. Tan gunners are gonna volley into the night goblins there. It'll be light cover and range, so, so sixes. sixes. No. no, they all miss. The other range guys did their job. <laughs> That's true. We're gonna go to fighting. We're gonna do the halberdier fight first. Your initiative is one lower. What does that mean for them? Two? I think two. I do have the initiative of cave squigs. They're apparently initiative four. Four is to hit because your weapon skill is just so powerful. Oh, stop three more. That was a great roll for me though, holy. Twos to kill. All right, this time, this time they kill six. Kills off the entire fighting rank of the halberds. No attacks back. Combat res is six wounds and two ranks for me. Whoops. You have banner, close order, and two ranks still. So I win by four, but I don't double out number you. And what's the leadership of uh, Rupertus? Rupu I believe Rup eight. Oh, eight. Oh, yeah, you're fine. He lost by four, so he's actually only giving ground. He might be nine on an Empire General. Hey, you only give ground there. These halberds, no matter what. Just right in front of them. Just right in front of the knights. In front of the knights, I'm just going to follow up, and this goes away. All right, we can go on to this fight over here, where uh, I go first with... Everything? Scarbrog. It's probably a bad idea, but I'm going to do it. Scarbrog is going to issue a challenge to the champion, because if I don't, you can just issue a challenge with the champion. I have to accept it anyway, so... <laughs> Scarbrog is going to accept it. Gladly, bra the champion, whose web skill five, right? Yeah. <laughs> so he actually misses. Oh, uh, strength five. I wounded the champion three times at minus one. You know, five of saves. Who is this man? <laughs> this man of men. <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> Who is this champion? <laughs> Look at this guy. Look at him. All right, jump up, get him. Oh, <laughs> he's stepping out of the way of giants. He's fighting off night goblin war bosses. Uh, that's a wound at minus one. Can he do another five up? Oh, okay, no! Jumpa, Jumpa gets him. him. Jumpa gets him at the very end. He's worth one copper. <laughs> oh yeah, the giant gets to go next. Uh, hey, what do you do, giant? You're gonna one, what the heck? That's Edbutt. Himbo gets to pick a model in the fighting rank and automatically hit them. I don't roll the hit, don't roll the wound. They just suffer D3 plus one wounds with no like armor saves or regenerations allowed. It's like warden regens are allowed. I'm gonna, I'm gonna narratively pick the idiot with the flag, boom. But then someone else just picks it up. We're gonna go ahead and allocate attacks. Uh, Wait, who stepped up, these the two? The character's in a challenge still? Oh, that's right, so everything in the giant. Everything that can. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, should be pretty much, it's, well, everyone but two works for me, yeah. Uh, I guess this guy couldn't, is the only one. Because we could say they die, they stepped up, this guy can't attack because of the challenge, and then f one, two, three. Six. Six. six can attack the giant. All right, the, the uh, giant's only got six wounds. You can one shot him. All right, not happening. Not with that roll. <laughs> Their that's... champion was carrying the unit. <laughs> Apparently. And that's ah, a wound on the giant, though. Five wounds left on the giant, and the giant's going to stomp on you. Two, two times. Two is to wound. And you have one wound on you with a six up save. Three. No. He stomps on one dude. I weirdly didn't do well. <laughs> Combat resolution, I have three wounds on you. Even the challenge is only worth one, because Jumpa got it at the end. I do get a close order from the giant. You did a wound to me, you have a banner, you have a close order, I win by one. And my unit strength is nine, which doesn't double outnumber you, so you're looking at leadership eight-ish. BSB reroll? BSB nearby to reroll it, absolutely. Assuming within, I'm within 12? Uh, that, yeah, that's for sure 12. You're good there. Uh, seven, that's a, I think that's, even with terror, that's just a give ground. The general circumvents it anyways, but yeah, so you, yeah, they're, they're good. They're gonna keep going, I'll just follow up, I guess. They give ground and, uh, we're good. All right, we got, that's it, we're done the turn. Well, don't I have time 
Well, don't I have to do stupidities now? Okay, let's uh, figure this out. These guys, seven. I think he's six, so they're stupid again. I figured adding a few troll units to this list without having a big leadership would be kind of funny. I didn't expect to fail every single time. Oh my god. <laughs> Them. Please! So next mustering, this list is looking for a troll hag. <laughs> she's only, I think she's eight, I guess, yeah. Well, but I'm, you can get the spell that gives you the... Uh, uh, you big smarts. Big smarts. Big smarts, that's right. This list needs big smarts. We need big smarts real bad. <laughs> Well, that's gonna be on to the command phase. Nothing's running or freaking out or anything, so. You don't need to rally anything. Is nothing what you're to, to say. rally. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. So we can go to charge declaration, where I these guys are gonna try and charge the handgunners. I believe we have range for that. Otherwise, that's the only charge. Oh, I should probably do um, spells. No, it's too far away. Cast Itchy Nuisance on the Great Swords because it's got the range. Ah, nope, that's not gonna work. <laughs> These guys are gonna declare a charge. They're not in the woods. They may look like, that's because of the tray. Sorry, they're outside of the woods. So they're gonna declare a charge and that's the only thing. Ah, uh, I have to... Oh, sorry, yeah, you're probably getting a lot. That's what I roll. You still decide what you want or... I need to flee. You're gonna flee? Flee it is then. Because I need to keep our hero alive. Felix alive, so you'll flee and I'll keep that four. Uh, so flee it up, boo! They go, well, it's good enough to pop through. <laughs> and you get to do leadership check for having you to flee through you. Their wizened hunter senses knew that fleeing was the right call. Ah, good. Because their buddies even knew what was going on. <laughs> it's part of the, literally part of the battle plan, guys. We talked about this like 45 minutes ago. We were gonna shoot our handguns and then flee, and you're supposed to hold. I'll do a leadership check to redirect. Uh, nope. Uh, nope, that ain't doing it, so I'll just keep that four. So fail me forward, I'm gonna wheel pretty much for the full four I'd, I'd expect. Yeah. It's gonna fail forward to there. And then I have my compulsory moves, which is all my stupidities. Boop. Again, I expected to fail like one or two every turn, not like all, I got one. One active unit of trolls, <laughs> and then they just succumb to You've got me. two more turns? This is turn bottom of four. Yeah, I got five and six after this. March! We're gonna go there, and then we're gonna, it's gonna be a weird wheel, but that'll, that'll do it. Before I move then, I'm sp technically supposed to move those fanatics. All right, we're gonna resolve this one first. Uh, they Stand spin still. on the spot. They, they, they're still spinning, but like the, the momentum's pulling them back and forth. That's what that's supposed to be. And I got that confirmed from our friends over at Warhammer World. Or play it however you want, but like, just don't question the rule. And the second one, blah, 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 blah. Dead! He's dead, Jim! Arr! Okay, then we technically move these guys. All the stupidities. That's it, I've done all my moving. They're gonna stay still and volley fire, I guess. Because, is that where we're at? Am I immediately at shooting? Yeah, so they're gonna volley fire into the great swords. It'll be 14 shots into the great swords. Should be hitting on fours. Yeah, you dealt with the fanatics easily by just standing still. <laughs> Maybe you don't. Deal with the archers so easily. Fours, eat it! No, oh, they're, look at them! Five, look at those! You get to have four a full armor. save. A oh, full plate? Oh, okay, it's pretty effective, apparently. Got him! All right, we're gonna go right to fighting. I'm just gonna do this one first, I suspect. Because I don't know why, my gut's telling me to do it. Squig Herd, our initiative four against the Halberdiers three. Fours to hit, though. Same weapons go. Yeah, they're still rolling well. Twos! At that time we kill eight. They're just getting progressively more and more mad. No attacks back, we're right to combat res. I'm at 10. It's super easy because of the ranks. And you're at minus three because of rank, banner, close order. So yep. seven. You lose by seven that time. Double uh, ones for give ground? Uh, no, because I, uh, uh, yeah, double ones for give ground. Otherwise, it's fall back in good order. Uh, no, that's a break unless. BSB? Ooh, that's a break. That's a break. That's All a right. proper break. Okay, so we have several things to do. Panic, panic, panic. And that's panic and panic. You do whatever order you want. Well, let's start over here. Work yeah. our way around. Spearman. Nine, they're good. General. Yep. Oh, and I broke a spear. Oh. Knights. They're good. Okay, good. BSB? I, you're good, okay. I would do him last because he lets them reroll. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're just rolling. Pass. We're good. And the spearman over here. Oh, aces, dude, they're all We're good. We're doing it live. So they are, before you roll, I will, yeah, I'll chase. Maybe I'll get lucky and hit the knights. But there's a general one there I gotta deal with. So you're gonna break nine inches and flee. They're running right through. We already did all the panics. And my pursue. Five. Should be good, maybe. 
Yeah, we missed the handgunners. We overrun into the knights. Ah, uh, these squigs are on some sort of warpath here. And we're coming down to this fight with the giants and Scarbrog. I just gonna keep going. No, no challenge to stop the mighty war boss. Ugh. He hits on well threes. And did we? Did you? Oh, you gave ground, didn't you? I fell back in good order, but they fell back in good order. I don't get my scabs. I'm just fighting with uh, strength four now. So two wounds at no AP. Four ups. Oh, I get one. Jumpa. Ah, oh, Jumpa, why? He does wound. He's strength five. Minus one with his fang-filled gob. Oh, one more dies. And then the giant is initiative two. So let's see what he's got. Oh, hey, this headbutt again. I'm gonna pick that, yeah, that guy who picked up a flag. I'll show him for picking up that flag. I'll kill another guy, bam. And uh, then that's greatsword attacks, essentially. What's the verdict here with the greatsword? Four sword? attacks into the giant, one into your uh, great and glorious warlord. <laughs> Scarbrog! All right, into the giant. Uh, should be threes. I'm only weapon skill three on him. Boom, 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 and mm. a wound. AP, yeah, I got one. no save on him, so that's down to four. And the one into the mighty Scarbrog. That is a hit, and that is your strength five. I gotta check this cave squig. Just toughness four, I wasn't too sure if it was plus one, it's like plus one wound. So I have light armor shield and armored hide. So I have four up save. Do you roll the three, so that's a six up save. That is a wound on the mighty Scarbrog. Three wounds remaining because of the jumpa giving him an extra wound. I get to stomp now with the yep. giant. It's gonna be two, couple wounds, six of saves on your full plate. I kill one more. We're getting there. We are getting there. There we go. Boom. I did four wounds and I have a close order for a combo as a five. You did a damage to the giant. You did a damage to the mighty warlord and you got a banner and you got a close. Oh, you, are you four guys there? I'm four guys there. Right, so you don't get the close order anymore. You lose by two. And uh, your general leadership nine is right there, so you're looking for a seven-ish. Well, well, welcome to Give it around again! The great swords won't stop. They just don't care. And there was a little bit of contention online, I've noticed, about like people applying terror to the unit and then the general's inspiring presence. We, again, take it for what it is. Ask our friends over at Warhammer World. We usually, we have good ties with them, and they say you absolutely use his, like, apply it to them, but if you have a general nearby, he circumvents it. Terror does not work if you're using Inspiring Presence, unless you have modifiers on the Inspiring Presence already, which then would apply to the unit as well. Welcome everybody to turn five of this game. Haven't accomplished as much as either one of us would have liked, I, I think. I feel like there's a lot of stuff left on the board that I was surprised that it still exists. Well, granted, we might have two very volatile battle rounds still. Well, let's find out. Yep. Got Rallying Cry on them first, see if they get back in, looking for a nine. Yep, they're, they get to reform. And uh, then we go to... Command phase stuff. Do you have any command phase stuff? Uh, rallying the other unit. Oh yeah, they Not broke. Rallying Cry? Uh, this guy probably has Rallying Cry built in. That they're good, nine. Yep. Yeah. They rally, Inspiring Presence helping out. Then we can go to the charge phase, if you have any. <laughs> All right, so we got some charges to declare here. Spearmen barely have side arc yeah, here. They can see, they can see them. It's good to go there, and then great swords into these short bows. Get away from a fanatic. Ah, those short bows are gonna flee. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you think they're brave enough to stick around? No, short bows flee, flee. Uh, turn the. Yeah, actually, I'll come over there. Flee, run. Uh, and then it causes a panic on the trolls, who do. Uh, fall back. They fall back in good order. They panic. They're gonna go six inches from the nearest enemy, which is them. <laughs> they pop through the goblins. They're gonna reform that way. So they're pretty much out of the game. So that was pretty bad. But it is what it is. And that's it. You can... Um, I have to decide if I'm redirecting this. Oh, I guess that would have been... I could have re-rolled that panic with them. Sorry. Six. Okay, they would have passed. They just stay where they were. Uh, which was... I think just right there. Yeah. So just go back to where they were. Sorry, guys. Uh, and then they can do a leadership check to redirect into the squig herd. Or they can just fail forward. Up to you. Leadership check to redirect. Ooh, they got the goods. So they're gonna charge the squigs, the squigs are gonna hold, and they're gonna go five inches with plus four for a nine. That's yeah. probably good. They do, they make it with a nine. Perfect. I mean, they, that's as best as they can maximize two models each, but hey, it's still a charge. I'm okay with this. Uh, and then these guys, that, uh, we'll say they charge first in case this causes any issues. Uh, two? 
four? I mean, they're going to make six? one of six. Uh, they would charge in afterwards to, to, so not to impede the aligning. But this is effectively... They can't line up. They'd have to wheel a little bit further or else they accidentally contact them. So they had to wheel about five inches, but then they just went... Or sorry, four inches, but they just went two forward. So they're good. I got this one lone goblin fanatic who's going to go, Oh, he might get him. He's going to hit him. He's going to pop through right to about this spot and mulch up Felix's unit. D6 hits on Felix's unit. That's five hits. I smell a panic coming up. They're dead on twos. I kill five of them. And they owe me a leadership nine check. Come on, boys. They're good. They don't care. Felix tells them this is fine. This is normal when fighting goblins. These hang under sidestep two. Felix and friends are going to march. They're going to do a big old wheel. And come on over. Get away from the, the, the bulk of the fighting here. So shooting, no real line of sight here because marched. Uh, they marched. We have crossbows in the garrison. We have crossbows on the hill. What are you, what are you feeling? What do you want to bully here? I'm feeling like we don't like trolls. They're getting scarily close. <laughs> they might pass a stupidity. I still get two turns with them, but they can just mulch things. So we'll see what they're capable of. Crossbows on the hill, into the stone trolls. Right in the stone trolls. No cover there, just probably full fives to hit. I'll double check. Yeah, yeah, probably range. Okay, we got three, two hits. And uh, I think I'm tough in this 400 troll, so four is wound here. Oh, that's an armor bane, and that's a regular wound. Bone trolls have a five up armor save. Nope, that's a fail, and then the, the armor bane is gonna burn right through, that's why I owe you regenerations. Oh, that's two damage on a troll, we only have one wound left. Let's do this one down to a wound. And then we have the garrison into those stone trolls, perfect. Same idea, looking, yep. looking at range here only, so five. Uh, light cover. Oh, the, the woods, woods, you're right, they're, they're infinitely high. Oh, hey, the woods protected one of the shots. Okay, fighting. You, we got lots of fights going on. We have four different combats here. I'll tell you which one I'm not doing first. It's that one, I understand. <laughs> uh, do you want to do the great swords or the big one then? Let's do the great swords. Great swords it is. You went for, your initiative four. I'm also initiative four. However, I only have two actually in base contact, so it's gonna be four, uh, five, six, seven, eight attacks. Get my attacks out of the way, but you get to attack at the same time. Hitting great swords on fours, wounding that. Ooh, ooh, what does that mean? AP two armor vein. So two six ups and a five up. Six ups. Ooh, nice and a five, five up. I kill one. Yeah, he still gets to fight back. You should have five attacks, I guess. Yep. Because Champ the champion's not in range, but he's still rolling separate because he's better weapons. You better believe he hits though. Champion great sword, love him. That's three dead. <laughs> three squigs dead. I did my attacks and I think that's it. Yep. I have two ranks, banner, closed order, three wounds? Yes, three wounds. I have a grand total of a single wound. So I lost that by whatever you have here. Six. Yeah. Lost that by six. Our general is nearby. So we're looking at leadership six here. Actually, they're leadership six as well. So I need double ones. That's a break. Uh, my battle standard bear is probably within 12. That's a fallback and no, you don't. How many you got? You can double out number, right? I got six dudes. You have 12? I have 15. Yeah, you double out number. I break. All right, all right, fine. I might break and I don't have enough squigs for squigs gone wild. Squigs gone wild. So I believe, yeah, if squigs ever flee from, they, just, they always break and flee from combat. Uh, but there's not enough squigs to actually do the damage element of it. There has to be a, a two, literally two more. If I had two more squigs, I would have done some damage to everything nearby. Do I have to test to reform then? Uh, you, you have to test to restrain to stop from overrunning. Yep. Uh, you're good, and you yep. can reform. A reform like that, and that whole squig herd is out of here. This I think we do this fight next. Yeah, I overran into you. I am going to be initiative seven, but you also charge into the side of me, and you're initiative seven with the spears, because you got the you get the extra four yep. for charging the flank. So your spears go at the same time as my squigs, and then these guys all go dead last. Well, mostly because if you want do you want to fight hand weapon shield with uh, Ru Rupertus? Uh, no, we'll keep the great weapon. If keep them going great weapon? Okay, perfect. Uh, I'll just get my squig. Uh, you do your attacks. It's your turn. You get your okay. spearman out of the way. So it's going to be eight attacks with the spearman because the champion with the sadly broken spear there uh, is in base contact. Uh, yeah, hit me on fours. Fours and fours to kill. Okay. And you slay three of them. Three from over here. But they will still get to fight. Uh, those three are going to attack that way, and then I'll just keep it simple. These five are going to attack that way. Uh, I'll put this one into the knights as well, so two this way, and the rest that way. Empire knights are weapon skill four. Hitting them on fours. Ooh, not bad. Get all those out of there. Uh, strength five. Threes to wound. These fail. No, twos to wound, probably. 
Yeah, because you're only... Yeah, my only strength five. Save. I always surprise me the strength five. These are minus one, so <laughs> seven saves at four up on Empire Knights. All right. Only two. Stand group dies first? Uh, musician dies first. Oh, wait, we don't have a musician anymore. There you go. You got Standard Bear, Champion, and Rupertus. And then I have four of this uh, Cave Squig attacks into the Spearman. Boom. Uh, that's a hit. And, yeah, it's a wound at minus one. But they have shields and light armor. Six up! No. no. Okay, we got a Spear. That Spearman dies. Bloop. Then the Champion Knight and his companion attack. Yep. And you might as well throw in the horse with it because it's all the same idea. It's all forced to hit and forced to wound. So it should be Rupert's three. horse too. So yeah, it should be six attacks in total. Perfect. Fours of fours. Two hits. Wow. <laughs> and one dead squig. Boom. And then we have Rupertus with his great weapon. Three attacks from the great weapon on threes. Ah, Rupertus, young, unskilled in fighting squigs. He kills one though. Not bad. Boom. All right, and I'm just gonna. I definitely lost this combat, but let's see by how much. Now for combo resolution on Jacob's side, five wounds on me. You are in my flank. You have two band, oh sorry, two close orders. You have two ranks in the spearmen on the side and the- A banner. A banner. Yes, that's right, because that was the flank. Flank and that's the banner. Well, it's the same difference. So quite a bit of combo resolution. I killed two knights. I killed a spearman. I don't get any rank bonuses because I'm disrupted. So I lose by that much. Obviously we're looking for double ones to stay here. Wow, I can't believe I'm breaking. Enough that was close enough to staying. Uh, fun fact with BSBs, you can reroll break checks even if you pass. That's like the only thing you can do it with. Uh, I'm just fixing the unit so we know where all the, the, these guys are all up here, technically. There, that's good enough. I don't have to do any more than that. Now the squigs explode. Yes, I have at least five squigs. I don't have enough for the more damage. It's got the basic damage, but there's a lot of things nearby. 2d6 inches for squigs gone wild. One of my favorite rules in the game. It's going to hit everything <laughs> at 11 inches. So it's only five squigs, so it's D3 strength five. It's like one attack, essentially, from uh, each squig D3 times every unit. It's going to hit. I think you got the trolls, too. It hits the trolls for sure, yeah. So it's like, I think it's every single one of your units, except for them and the garrison. Yeah, yeah. So it's all of this is hit. Is it, sorry, was it hit back here? Is that too far away? That's going to be too far. That's yeah. too far? Okay, but it's, so it's, it's like all of this is hit. That's awesome. We're going to start here and work our way over. D3 strength five hits AP one. So start with these trolls. It's one hit, they're wounded on a three. That's a wound. That's actually, oh, they don't get armor bane. It's just like, yeah. Anyways, uh, that's my save, which I fail. Regeneration, which I fail. This troll falls over dead. <laughs> Let's do the general, the great Scarbrog. He's hit twice, he's gonna be fine. He's toughness four. He's wound on threes, oh. He's got a four up armor save, go to a five up. <laughs> he's got one wound left. No, we gotta fight the great swords. <laughs> Come on, not Scarbrog. The giant takes a hit. It wounds him. All right, he's down to three wounds. Squigs, why? Great swords are handy. Before I move, I gotta do a panic on them because they lost over a third of their guys. And they panic. Awesome. <laughs> the gen, the BSB is nearby. They still panic. Okay, uh, they are going to flee from the great swords. Uh, they only fall back in good order though. This is where they are, now they get to rally. Uh, let's do your great swords. One of them is wounded at minus one. One little bite from a Four squig. Up. No, oh. roll flat, please. Ooh, We're five, five up, you're good, yeah. Uh, handgunners. One, it's a wound, it should kill a handgunner though. Yep, no oh. armor. Spearman. Oh, ooh, they seem to go that way a lot. Three bites. Oh, only one wound though. <laughs> you get six up save because light armor shield. Uh, does That's it matter? Fine. This guy's dead. Boop. Yep. And then we're gonna do the halberdiers in the back. One hit, one wound, it should just kill a halberdier. Okay, are you ready for, let me see if I remember his name. It's not Felix, it's not Frank, it's- Carl. Carl, I wanna say, he's in two hits. Ah, oh, he's, what's his toughness? Probably. Captain of the Empire's toughness four, that's one wound on him, he's got full plate armor? Yeah, and, and a shield. Okay, so he's good, he's got a three. Oh, he's good, fine. He's got his, he's got his, I always like to play uh, every hand weapon characters have that can take a great weapon. I like to play him as like hand and a half weapon. So he's just, you know, he's got a shield. Also he's look at that go. model. That weapon looks great. Boy, you just put, you put two hands on that hilt. Yeah. <laughs> now for the knights. Three hits on the knights. Uh, you get to kind of like divvy them up. You can go like one, one on each. One on each model. Okay, so on the actual knight unit, one wound on them, minus one, so four up save. The banner bearer is slain. We're left with the champion and Rupertus is wounded at minus one. He also has a two up save. 
He's well three up, but he's good. Those spearmen. One wound at minus one. Six up. No, oh, he goes down. And lastly, the Felix unit of handgunners. Uh oh, that's three. It's three dead handgunners. <laughs> You're left with just Felix and the banner bear. That's right. Do we need? They need to panic. They're good. They don't care of much. And lastly, those great swords. Three. Oh man, that side is relentless. Uh, three wounds of minus one. Should be five ups. Yeah. Five yep. Ups. Five ups. That kills two great swords. Okay. And then uh, goodbye. That's it. Dead. Well, let's see if they overrun. Uh, I think we want to try and reform with both units. That's uh, they can. Oh, I don't know if you can re. Oh, they have a musician, right? Yeah. That gives them a plus one modifier to their. But we're using the generals. Yeah, leadership. so they, yeah, they, they just overrun. That's yeah, it. that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the knights are good. Yep, so they have to go 2d6 inches forward. Straight yep. Spearmen are in it to win. Boop. Yeah, because I think the spearmen's leadership, what's the spearman sergeant? Seven? Seven or eight. So yeah, yeah, so the general is better even with the musician there. Whoosh. Three inches, eh? Okay, not bad. And then you could reform the general. You could just take them off the tray. Yeah. You know what? They, for a young general, they're holding the line. They're doing the work. He read the manual. He deployed <laughs> according to the manual, and it seems to be working. Okay, good. He knows how to read. He remembers things, and they, but more importantly, they followed his orders. Yeah. Okay, well, let's go on to this final fight here, I suppose. Another give ground, I guess. <laughs> yep, it was another give ground. It's been a while. All right. Scarbrog is going to attack with his hand weapon. He's going to hit two times, actually, because he's web skill five. Wounds once, no armor pen. He doesn't have his cab spear anymore. Four up. We're good. We're good. All right. Jumpa! Two hits. No! Oh, Jumpa! And then Himbo the Giant is going to roll a six. Ooh, that's jump up and down. Jump up! Jump up! Jump up! Jump up and jump down. Four twos to wound. So I, I, I do d6 plus one hits automatically, and it, they wound on twos because it's rank six. No armor saves allowed. As I just you kill, killed the unit. I completely destroyed the unit of great So if he'd gotten over his fascination with crumping the flag guy earlier. <laughs> You know, I can't help the giant, dude. That's Himbo. He Himbo does what Himbo wants. Now, their unit strength is only four uh, at the start of the combat phase here, so nothing panics. No, no, no one cared, apparently. It's my turn next. I'm going to try and restrain and reform the general. He does. And then the giant Himbo is going to restrain and reform as well. We're going to have Himbo just go like that, and then he's fine. Hey, that's, that's your turn. That's it. That's my turn now. We're on to the bottom. Is this the bottom of five? Yeah, bottom yeah. of five. In the start of turn subphase, that's real stupidities. All right, here we go. Round one, please, please, river trolls, please, stone trolls. I just want to. No! Well, well, well. Aren't we in the exact same position we've been in all game? Let's go with uh, rally. We're now in my command phase. I do have to rally this unit or try to. They do rally. Look at that. I think the actual boss is like leadership. Yeah, but they're good. They're rally. Then we go to the charge declaration. Giant handgunners. Now you can hold flee! it. They're just gonna flee anyways. That works. Yep. Roll. Oh, and then uh, he actually doesn't declare a charge. He's got random movement. Yeah. All right. Flee it up. Two d six inches. Gonna go kind of this way. All right. Eight. All right. That's gonna be a panic check on them. They don't care. Again, part of the plan. The giant's gonna do a leadership to redirect. I, uh, I think he's actually ten. I'm gonna redirect into them. And uh, I assume you want to hold. I have to. Yeah. Because you can't do anything else on a redirected charge. That's what I thought. Yeah, I couldn't. I, I yeah. thought it was like hold or flee, but mm -hmm. like nothing else. Okay, fair. So they're going to hold anyways. And uh, I think that's my only charge declaration because these guys are all just going to stumble forward. So we're going to go. Uh, we would go. We can wheel through our own guy on the charge. We're just going to maximize to that point. And then the closest point of maximizing. Let's uh, roll up the great Scarbrag and see where he runs to. He has a random characteristic of 10. Well, he's just gonna, oh, he's a skirmisher, so he's gonna go bye-bye. <laughs> the great and powerful Scarbrag won't die this day. With 10 inches, he can run this way to a back here, get shot in the back by crossbows and die. Or he can come into the combat like the brave night goblin war boss he is and help break this unit and just keep on going. That sounds like a Scarbrag, Scar, Scarbog thing. Scarbog, oh, but the giant dies, timbers, that's fine. Scarbog! <laughs> He's going in. Woo! So he'll maximize on those guys there. Then it's troll time. 
So they move forward, they get blocked. They don't, go, you don't have to go your full moon characteristics. So you can go zero, but they're just gonna move forward and not be flanked by great. They're gonna move forward enough to not be flanked. Uh, could you move those night goblins uh, six inches into the woods, I guess? They have to march. And our night goblin unit back here is gonna, I didn't want to cast any spells there, by the way. Well, I did, but I've forgotten. They're, they wouldn't have helped. That's their capability of marching. Thank you, trolls. And then that's where the archers end up on the march. So with that, I think we go to my fighting over here because they march, they can't shoot. Right, initiative goes to Scarbrag, the mighty with his four attacks. He's got a cab spear again. He pulled that bad boy out. Uh, did you want to issue a challenge, by the way? I had to accept it. Mm, yes, yeah. sure. I will attack. Scarbrag will, of course, accept this challenge. He will defeat any human in combat. You heard him. Any human. I, I I've only got light armor and shield, so you probably do. I kill him. And then Jumpa. See if he messes him up, too. Uh, that's a hit. That Jumpa. And then one more six up save. Okay, so it's worth two combat res. That champion. Foolish human thought he could beat Scarbrag. Himbo. Let's see what Himbo is going to do. Yeah, Himbo! I see an idiot with a flag! <laughs> so he's going to boom. <laughs> Headbutt him. All right, so we got to... All right, here we go. A lot of attacks. Uh, can't go into Scarbrag because of the challenge, but the rest can go into the giant. By the time we take out Step Up and do the second rank, I'm going to have 11 attacks. Yeah, it should be quite a bit. Uh, should be 12 attacks in the uh, himbo of the giant. Uh, fours and sixes. I was pulling a Luca and taking the least favorable <laughs> interpretation for myself. <laughs> I appreciate it, but I want to see something bad. Ah, himbo is probably fine. We got four hits on him and sixes. Nothing. Nothing. All right, himbo is fine. We're going to go stomping. This is his favorite time. Oh, he's not really, he's actually kind of out of energy. Two more dead spearmen. We get a total combat resolution of five going into this. And uh, I think that's it for me. You have no wounds, but your rank banner closed order. Yep. So I think I win by two. Yep. I uh, yeah, definitely don't double outnumber you. So nine. Oh, that's a break, but that's what BSP. the banner's for. Oh, that's a give ground. There you go. Oh, I oh no, I fall for the trap. Uh, Himbo, Himbo is going to try to resist the restraint and reform. He does. Scar. Oh, no, they're both screwed. Oh, I can't do much better. I guess they could. I'm going to test the restraint and reform him as well. Just, uh, nope. No human can beat Scarbrag. <laughs> I guess he would go, I'll say he goes first so this guy can do that on his restraining reform. Himbo, the wise. That's it, we're on to the last turn for the Empire and Ruf, 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 Rupertus. Rupertus, thank you. I keep, I keep wanting to say Rufus. So Rupert, Rufus is fine too. Rufus is fine too. I'll try to just remember Rupert, us. Turn six, Empire. Now at the start of turn for the Empire, we have three happy treats for you. Nags come flying out of the unit, and then we go to your command phase where you get to rally and cry them. Boop. Yep, they get to rally. A rally, reform right there. They got a large target right in front of them. And um, Give me actual- Give a second to think about ranges before I declare movement or oh, yeah. charges. Absolutely. Oh, it's almost fanatic time. Are you, would you like to charge your great swords into my stone trolls? Nope, thought about it. Answer's no. Okay, fine, that's fair. This is a campaign game. Stuff that dies stays dead, maybe. Yes. So I want to <laughs> save units now on turn six. And whatever <laughs> points I got is how many I got to win the game. I think ultimately you did an excellent job of holding the pass at this point regardless. Yes, yes. that's the hope. <laughs> um, so then we're on to movement where I you have to do fanatics in the compulsory. Yes, you have no charge to declare, so I'm going to go ahead and do my... I'm going to do that weird one over there yeah. first. Where does destiny take him? Right there. Ooh, this way, that way, this way, that way, this way, right back there. I I want to cause lasting damage on you, so we're going to send that first fanatic right towards the great swords. Six is a little short, I think. It's just by a quarter of an inch. Whoosh, right there we end up. Uh, I don't know if I want to try that again. I might just <laughs> we're gonna mulch up these spearmen, I guess. One, two, through the spearmen. I want to get to the heart of your army. I want to go this way. This one's going to go skirt this line. Oh no! He's gonna fall short. Three's gonna be about here if I had to guess. Yeah, he's gonna go boop. And then we're gonna try this guy's gonna skirt the line of that fanatic. Oh, he'll go nine. That, I'm just, I don't even have to measure that because he'll go like this, hit him, and then just pop, keep falling that path and end up around here. D6 hits. It's three of them. 
Oops, sorry about that. Two is to kill, plus one, can only have two dice. I kill three of the spearmen. Mm, 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 mm. And then, you know, screams and mans. Not bad, not bad. And then your remaining moves. So we're thinking some moves, we're gonna reform the spearmen, reform the great swords, and then we're gonna uh, see, boom. Make things harder for charges. <laughs> I have to go through my own fanatics. Uh, and then Felix and his handgunner are gonna his, get out of here. His trusty banner bearer are expert hunters who know. <laughs> that's Rupert, that's Felix's banner. <laughs> that uh, this is where he needs to be. That's a safer spot, absolutely. That's it for movement. Perfect, awesome, great. I, I tried to convince Jacob to have uh, Rup Rupertus, Rupertus uh, detached from the unit and run and hide somewhere. And he's like, no. No, that's his best buddy. That's been his bodyguard for like 20 years since he was like a little <laughs> kid, like kicking his knees or something. I don't think it would look good on an empire, a general no. of the empire, if he was to no, abandon no, no, his no. men. He's not abandoning his best man. All right, absolutely perfect. Then we can go to shooting. Where do you, uh, where do you want to begin? Let's try the handguns into the giant. All right, the ones that reformed. Uh, they that's count as be, moving. Yeah, nine shots into them. Ponderous, so minus two to hit. So I think it's just sixes. Yeah. Yep. But we might as well try for sixes. So. Bang. Bam, bam, bam. Got one. Nice. We got them loaded and a six. No. And crossbows here, and I assume we're gonna do the garrison crossbows yeah. afterwards if he's still alive. Himbo First cannot be crossbows. Cannot be felt. Oh god, that's like all hit. Oh, a few misses, like three of them, seven hits though. Sixes just take wounds off. He's only got three. Himbo, no! Thud, 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 thud. <laughs> all right, the only real target the garrison crossbows have are the stone trolls in the middle of the battlefield. Should just be like cover because of the woods and uh, six is because of range. Oof. Nice, three hits and fives to wound. No, fours to wound, that's a wound. They get their full light armor and armored hide save and then a troll regeneration, that's the damage. Two damage left on that troll. Okay, that's shooting done. Combat. You can't beat Scarbrag! I'll kill you! Oh, uh, you... I pursued, because you felt... No, you gave ground, didn't you? I gave you? ground. So these are just hand weapon attacks. Threes to wound, five up city. That's pretty good, though. He's doing pretty good. Oh, your armor buckle, he just smashes shields aside, cuts throats, get out of my way. Get him, jumper! No, jumper. That's a minus one. I slay a fifth man. Boom. Uh, okay, so in this case, because the spears, there's not the extra rank. It's only the five, those five guys step up. So only the, is it three left attacking? Yeah. I'm just going to do it a little differently because sometimes spears can be a little complicated. This helps you visualize a little better if you pull it from the fighting rank and then they go to attack. So it's like these two guys step up to here. So they step up. These three step up. They're not fighting. Boom, boom, boom. These two guys get to fight still. And so do the two guys in the back there. Oh, sorry, four guys in the back. So these two and those four get to fight still. All right, we got six attacks back at me. No champion to speak of. I slew that man's. Uh, that's a lot of hits, that's not good. We're toughness four. You need fives here. Stop it! No, I only have a four up armor. I got light armor, shield, armor, and hide. Please jump up. No, oh, he just takes the less skewered by his spear as he pushes in the middle of the unit. Ugh. The death of a general. You gotta see if you overrun or not. I have to oh, you might. if I want to overrun yeah. or not. 10? You get to overrun if you make it, but... No, no, no. I'm trying to stay away oh, from that. Oh, well, that's the leadership check then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you're good. You're good. You got the general. No, he's only... The death of a general! No! My army is shaken. There was a good part of me that wanted to put in the 5th edition rule of general death. My entire army would have to do a panic check. But maybe for the future. That's going to bring us to the last turn of this game. The first game of the campaign, and I'm pretty happy with the outcome. Pretty tight game so far. Let's see some of those stupidity checks. Go, 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 go. That's a, whatever, No matter what the other die is, I fail. These guys. <gasps> they failed, they're four. But it didn't matter because they failed before them. Those ones. Please, 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 please. No, we're gonna live to fight another day. We'll see more trolls in the upcoming. I, I hopefully. Now, granted, that doesn't mean the Scarbrag is dead. He just means he has to roll for a casualty check at the end of the game. But there's still a chance. Not that he's got a great leadership. Okay, well, we did our stupidity checks. I don't think I have any command phase things. I got spells actually. Ah, uh, do I care about spells right now? Fanatics are all over the place. They're already wounding things on twos. Initiatives are already lower. Nah, it's all, I won't risk the miscast. And, uh, ooh, nothing of mine is charging because they all fail the stupidity check, so here we go, doesn't matter. Oh, I guess my turn's super simple. I'm just rolling fanatics. 
And I'll be volley firing short bows, that's right. Well, we're gonna go to my charge declaration step. They're blocked, they're not charging. And uh, compulsory moves. Compulsory moves, we're just gonna. And Is that as, before or after fanatics? Uh, same time. Got it. Same time, yep. I'm gonna Do you wanna stay further away from them before you scatter them? We're gonna move those ones first and then we're just gonna do all the fanatics. All right, what's this guy doing? What's up? Oh, he's just gonna, oh, he might hit the train though. Look at that, he's so safe and tucked in. Let's go with this fanatic. Oh boy. Oh boy, that's gonna hit him and my guy. So they're good. Bo they're both gonna trade blows to each other. So I'll do D6 hits on you, one. That kills one man's. And then D6 hits on that fanatic. I'm just gonna, one, he's dead. And then, but I also take hits for hitting the old fanatic. So five, let's roll two dice. What a surprise, they're both dead. <laughs> and then we got that one fanatic to go. And bloop. He stayed, oh no, he dies actually. He, he, well, he stays right there, but he gets tripped up in his own chains and Whoa! I don't have. Oh, I got short, short bows. Uh, short short bows. bows. I got three, six, nine plus five. It's gonna be fourteen shots into those great swords. Fours to hit. That's He's, definitely not long range. That was a miss, 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 miss. Look at that though. Fours. Let's see what your full plate armor says about four wounds. Last time it didn't like it. No, oh, two died. Okay, there we go. I'll take it. And that, everyone, is the end. <laughs> I don't have nothing else to do. There's no fights. There's no nothing. That's the. It looks like you held. Now, in the campaign, it's very important to figure out the victory points because that's going to determine how... I have it, like, narratively in my mind that, all, you're, you know, you lose your equipment as you yeah. die. But it's all mundane equipment. You, you find it again easily enough. But, like... Depends all, who controls the battlefield at the end. That's exactly what it is. That's why it's important to figure out the victory points. Yep. So we're going to go calculate the victory points right now, and we'll be right back. All right, so I conceded to Jacob and the Empire 1,001 victory points. You did capture a banner. Oh, uh, on the great swords. That's you giving me. Yeah, I, I give you a thousand points, and I get five hundred. Then I guess. I, Unless that's, I gave up four hundred and forty-nine. Damn. So that's a degree of five hundred. Now that means there's a couple brackets. I was kind of toying with this one, and I'm I'm not going to adjust it until the end of the campaign. But it was it's degrees of two hundred and seven fifty. Uh, for, sure. for different roles. I wasn't too sure 500 or 750, but I wanted like, I felt 500 might be too punishing and I thought 750 was a good number. I don't know. I think, I don't think it matters too much. Roll with it for now. That's Let's what I'm do, saying. We'll see yeah. how this campaign goes. And if we need to fix it for the next one, you guys will yep. enjoy that too. Correct. And as I said in the beginning of the intro video, this is all preliminary. These are testing out mechanics of the campaign, seeing what I like, what the viewers like and what they don't like and what I can adjust in the future. But for now, we're going to roll with it. So the next step is we're going to lock Line up your dead. Bring out your dead, my friend. Bring out your oh, dead. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, so we kind of set up the casualties a little bit, but I wanted to go over narratively what happens yeah. at these battles for people who are like, well, why would those guys just turn tail and run? They don't, it's like army break points. They like the battle, they see the battle not going their way. They're not even really engaged, decide to turn around, and there's like a rally point that all armies have to go back to kind of thing when the battle Yeah, and they may be yeah. fighting their way back until Correct, like yeah. these, until the Empire gets done chasing them, and then yep. like, we gotta recover our losses, patch the people yeah. up. You don't want to like overextend, that's yeah. kind of like, that's how you fall for traps and, and stuff and, like that. And yeah. Sometimes it just gets dark out. Yeah, it's true. done. It's dark out. We don't have flashlights yet. <laughs> That's true. It got dark. The battle's over. Okay, so now we're going to go over our casualties. And it's a, it's a roll for every model for every unit. And it's the base roll is a four up. Mm -hmm. you, re you recovered. It, was, it. it wasn't a mortal injury. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's just a leg wound, whatever. Yep. A little bit of bandaging, a little bit of rest. You're good to go. Uh, under a four is you. it was a terminal injury, mortal injury, you're dead. You're, or if the unit fled, they, they, they um, soldiers that, like deserters. Yeah, they, they just deserve. left. Yeah, correct. They're like, I'm done being a soldier. I'm going home to the farm. Now, there are modifiers. If you're a character, I always give characters plus one. I was iffy on monsters and stuff. I'm going to keep monsters at no modifier because characters are a little bit more interesting. Uh, characters get plus one. You get plus one if you won the battlefield. Or you get plus, yeah. sorry, you get plus zero if you won the battlefield. You get plus one if you won by 200. You get plus one if you won by 750, which stack. So you're, looking at, you're looking at three ups. Nice. Essentially. Everything's rolling a three up. Characters roll two ups for you. On my end. My characters didn't. Your char hurt. Yeah, your characters are good. On my end, I think I'm just looking for fours. There's no negative modifiers. Yep. It's only fours is the worst. So I'll go over mine first. These are completely destroyed units. So I lost two squads of squig herds, two mangler squigs, himbo the giant went down, five fanatics, uh, one from, uh, well, one from one squad, one from the other squad, one stone troll went down, poor Scarbrag, 
uh, the Goblin Warboss went down. He gets plus one. He'll be on a three up. But on one or two, he suffered a nasty injury and never recovered. And then four random... The initial four goblins that got hit by our Hellstorm rocket battery over yeah. here. <laughs> I'll, I'll roll for them first. How many of them recover? All four of them are dead. Every single one of them took nasty shrapnel. And now I permanently update the list to have four less goblins in this unit. Now, at the start of every campaign phase, which is what you were watching earlier, uh, units do get to replenish. It's like a mechanic based on the leadership check. I'll cover that in greater details when it comes up. But if this, com if this army gets into combat again, this is what that unit's stuck at. Unless I decide to replenish it later. I'm going to do my character last. This one troll is dead. He's not coming back either. Uh, let's do these two goblin fanatics. One's still good, but one is not was from that unit, by the way. Uh, we have these three Goblin Fanatics from the Archers. They are going to keep two of them. Nice. They they, they woke up hours later. <laughs> and they found their way back to the Goblin Rally uh, point. Now, there's a chance that one of those Fanatics was actually from the Archers. So I'll say there's two for each unit, just to make it simple. Uh, and then we have Himbo. We'll do Himbo last two. Uh, the Mangler Squigs are both the same. Oh, they're both dead. No Manglers left for that army. And then I got to roll a lot of dice here. These are 24, so two sets of 24. Do the Herders first. Uh, this one's got two Herders still good to go. And then I'm going to do this one's Herders over here. Oh, they're both fine. Perfect. And then I have 20 uh, Squigs in both squads. Like the Squigs that die, they... they they find them in the woods again. They find more squigs, whatever it might be. First squad of squig herd. This groupment of fours and stuff. Boom, 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 boom. These are all dead. Dead, dead. Not squig herd, sorry. These are actual squigs. The herd I already rolled for. Gone, gone, gone. So out of all that, I actually keep five, eight, <laughs> eight of the squig. So that's all that unit's left with. And the other squad. Bloop. Okay, about the same-ish. Not great. Not a lot of squigs left there, but it kind of makes sense, like Jacob was saying. They uh, died a lot. We're going to lose 5, 10, 12. It's hard same. to chase down squigs that exploded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna, to save, my, save me the time of pulling them, I do have a mechanic where you can merge two similar units together as long as you don't break any rules of it. So I'll have 16 squig and 6 herders in one unit. <laughs> All right. So they're able to form up into a new unit. That is, that is it. Please, Himbo. Please live, Himbo. Oh, no. He's gone. <laughs> Those uh, 42 quarrels he took really did him in good. Uh, you never, we'll never see the likes of him again. And then we got Scarbrag, the idiot. No, ah, oh, come on! Warboss is dead, too! What is this list even left with? The casualties! I present to you the remains of my Night Goblin Army. Goblin Army number one. 1,030 like, points left over. Our new general is this guy, this Night Goblin big boss. That is, that is it. Yeah, he's just got a great weapon. <laughs> he's got his level 2 shaman. I got one squig herd. I don't have enough core in the list anymore, so... When I go to replenish it, I have to, you know, get my core allocation. I'll have to try and find other things here and there. And goblins don't really have great leadership, so it's hard for them to rally numbers other than goblins to them. So we have that core, those archers, one unit of two. I got 550 points of quality trolls left still. Two fanatics left there, two fanatics left there. That's it. Let's go take a look at Jacob's uh, casualties. Your turn! Woo! We got it laid out from really dead stuff to less dead things. It's just, you lost a lot of stuff here. So. I lost a lot of models, bro. Um, so let's find out if the War Machine survives. Two crew are still alive, but if they don't have a War Machine, they probably have something more important to do. They just go do other life. things. Yeah, the War Machine's yep, good. The War huh? Machine's good, so the other crew. No. Oh, so, so it's we're only down got to just two crew two. and a hell storm. <laughs> uh, this entire squad of greatswords went down. So I've got 17 regular guys. Why don't you roll me the champion separately? That's why I've got 17. Oh, fair. I already planned this out, Luca. Okay. Oh, no. All right, so these guys, those six don't come back. So there's still four. Oh, that's not the full class. There's right. still 11. Yep. And then the command. The champion who was a beast. Oh, the oh, champion dies. He got his head bit off. I think Jumper bit his head off, right? He got jumped up and down. Either that or the giant head bottom real good. No, yeah, I think he got killed uh, by the The ball. banner is no is, is good, here, yeah. and the musician is gone. You you would assume that one of the remaining guys here knows how to learns how to blow the horn too. Yep. You can keep your you can keep your but the no, champion but does die. They use drums. Oh that's true they do use drums. So that unit lost 
seven models, sorry, six models plus the champions. They lost seven yep. models in total. Okay, so it's the 13 strong squad. Onto <laughs> Rupertus's honor guard. His, his uh, best buddies he grew up with. Just three dudes on threes. No, oh. no, we've got a musician. He's good. We've got a banner. He's good. We've got the regular knight. Oh, they're fine. They just, you know, a few bites from Squigs got dismounted, maybe knocked out. They woke up a They little might bit. have to find new horses, but they're Oh, good. They're, they got lots of those. All right, we have Felix's handgunner squad here. Felix and his best buddy Bannerman survived. Not so bad. we've just got all their regular helpers. No, only two of them. No, three of them, three actually. Of them. Three yeah. of them don't make so it. So seven man unit? Yeah, not bad. All right, great sword time number two. These guys didn't get beat up as bad. What happened to them? I don't remember what happened. Uh, they were the ones who ate fanatics and short bows. They still have their champion, and they oh, they're just missing regular great swords. Yeah, okay. regular great swords. So let's see how many regular great swords were okay after they got just three go down. Yeah, they got bludgeoned by. Um, Fanatics. Yep. So three of them are mortal. And this one spearman unit that took some fanatic hits. Yep. These were the ones, I believe, who flanked charge and won the game for us. Effectively, yeah. Oh, only one? one. Huh. So that's a 20-man unit of spears still. That's with comfy. Full command. All right, in the other spearman squad, uh, we have nine regular guys. These are the ones, four of them died. These oh, ones four. got kicked by a giant. Uh, and these are the ones who fought the mighty Scarbrag, including the champion. Did the champion recover from his bashing by Scarbrag? No, he's fine. Just taken out, knocked over. A little embarrassing, but otherwise still functional. And then we move on to the Halberds. They took a beating all game against the Squig Herds. All game. And they, they, were, they were critical in this victory. 18 dead Halberds. How many stand back up? Oh, God, they, okay, a lot of those are pretty bad. A lot of yeah. those guys, it's like seven or eight of them died. All right, yeah, eight of them go down. So that's the squad, that was like a 30, you said 35? 32. 32, all right, there's 26 left? Yeah. No, 24, yeah. Uh, and then one handgunner. He's fine. What, I don't even know what happened to him. Oh, it's uh, probably a fanatic, I guess. Just tripped him up. <laughs> no, squig explosion. Oh, a squig, a little bite, like a little minor leg injury, but he recovered after a couple weeks, you know? All right, so you have consolidated all your forces again. It doesn't look like you lost much there, yeah, well, other than the Hellstorm rocket battery. No, uh, he kept no, it. No, he survived. It he was just lost a crew. That's right, lost so a crew. I, I did. I counted it, and the butcher's bill for the Empire today was twenty-five men. Twenty-five men died after. That's recovery. not bad. And the only notable casualty after recovery was the champion on one unit of great swords. <sighs> That's still a loss. I mean, I'm sure the it great is swords, a loss. Yep, He's that... weapon skill five. I'll have you know, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, that's not so bad of a butcher bill at the end of the day. Um, as opposed to Luca's 1,030 point list with 500 awesome points of trolls, this empire list is left with 1,762 points. That's not bad. I don't mind that at all. And After they, recovery, we're in a good shape. They hold the pass. They do. And I did forget to mention one thing for my guys. When I recalculated the points, I forgot to add these guys back in as like that ad hoc unit of two squig herds. So we still do have them in the list. It's around 1,200 points. So we only lost a casual 800 instead of like around 1,000. But why don't we go back to the campaign map to see what the next combat's gonna be. And for our YouTube and Vault members, we continue Scumbog's Vision, our first old world map campaign. Now, this is for our supporters of Mini Wargaming, our members. If you want to check out this campaign, the rest of it we have available, all you have to do is click on the link down below to sign up for a seven day free trial, where you can at least check it out, see if you like it, and then after those seven days, decide if you wanna stick around and support us or not. We got a lot of content to go along with this in the Vault, and much, much more to come. Thanks again for checking out this video, everyone. Hopefully you enjoy it. Leave some feedback down below and I'll catch you all next time. That spells the doom of poor Scarbrag. Yet the army is not defeated. It is pushed three hexes away, essentially chosen by the Empire Army as they get to kind of corral the direction they, uh, they retreat towards. And I'm gonna flip the army over. Not only is it done moving because it initiated the combat, but once an army is kind of caught, in combat before it has a chance to move, then it is stuck and it cannot move for that campaign phase either. At least that's the rules I have written for right now. Uh, that will mean that both of these armies are finished 
and we get to move to the other forces of fantasy army over here. Now we're going to keep this one nice and simple. We're, we want to interact with the campaign map a little bit, and we are going to go up to this artifact power or this point of interest up here, and they would find it. They, it's an old Bretonian tomb uh, with a essentially forgotten Bretonian lord, and inside of the tomb they find. A razor standard, or narratively the equivalent of a razor standard. It could have been the, the, the Lord's standard that got buried with him, but it does have magical properties. And it's already been randomized, did it off camera, but I knew that this was going to be the move anyways. So yeah, razor standard is going to be attached to that Bretonian army. Uh, that'll probably just end up helping out one of the Knights of the Realm units. That means next we have our Orc forces. We have our Troll Hag, Scumbog, and our Orc Warboss yet to go. And today we have a guest joining us who has a wood elf army so why not go do a wood elf fight right away uh steve will be controlling the orc war boss in this battle report and he's off getting the game ready right now but we've already discussed what we want to do for today's game and instead of going for the easy artifact over here uh the orcs are obviously going to immediately invade the woods and attack the armies of the wood elves now they're not quite entering the woods to do so i didn't want to get into the nitty gritty of it yet, but there is some nasty circumstances uh, crossing through the, the the dark woods over here or the woods of Athelloren or simply crossing the mountain passes uh, if, if, if an army dares to choose so. Well, that leads us to today's battle report. I should note also that the magical artifact that the Wood Elf army is carrying is an enchanted shield. Simple as that. And if the orcs are able to win this battle report, or if the elves are able to defend themselves, they'll keep it. But if the orcs win it, there's, there's rules for taking the artifacts away from the roving armies. Otherwise, you'd never be able to get them. 